Hey everybody, Joy here. It is November 7, 2021, and I'm back in my wonderful, wonderful sewing room. <laughs> Although, I told Jerry, I said I missed my RV. He said, how is that even possible, Joy? <laughs> I just do. I, it's like you're a little girl and you're playing like, you know, you build a tent in the living room with the blankets all over the chairs and stuff and you crawl underneath. I don't know. I just love the, the littleness of it. Let me say it that way. So you know about my Christmas trees. I have two projects here. This is the fall, what's it called? Hmm, something about a star or a wheel. Carpenter's wheel. This is my fall carpenter's star slash wheel project. This is my Christmas tree project. So one of you suggested that instead of cutting out two and a half inch squares and sewing them on and then sewing on another piece to that, the same color, that I just make one long piece. And I went, well, why didn't they make the directions that way? That doesn't make sense. So I'm going to do an experiment and see if I can make it work that way because it makes perfect sense to me. Why cut two pieces if you can only cut one? So when I do it, I'll show you how I do it, okay? When I get ready to do it, I've got to set up my sewing machine. When I start a quilt on a certain machine, and I started this one on my 930 in the RV. So here's my 930 over here. Is that my 930? No, that's my 1130. So my 1130 is scooching down the table. My 930 is down here on the floor. <laughs> and I'm going to put it up here. And then I'm going to set it up to finish this um, Christmas tree quilt. I'm doing the kitty cat quilt on the 1130. So I will continue to do the kitty cat quilt on the 1130 until it's all done. I don't know what quilt. <laughs> I haven't really started putting together the fall carpenter star wheel yet so we don't know what machine this is why you have to have more than one machine my friends you just have to it's just wonderful to be able to have several projects and you know just work on this one for a while and then work on that one for a while and then work on that one so i've got three going right now i've got the kitty cat library i've got the christmas trees and i've got the star slash wheel not to mention the one i never finished I don't know if you can see it up there on my board. The um, Safe Harbor. I finally got the fabric to finish the Safe Harbor. So I need to get the borders on it and get it quilted. So I've actually got four projects, but then again, there was the mystery quilt from Edna Sitar. So that's five projects. Hmm, that's a lot of projects. <laughs> oh well, who cares? Nobody comes here, nobody sees them. So, except you. You're the only ones that gets to see what I do. While I was gone, <laughs> I managed to get Jerry to take me. We were eating at this certain restaurant, and right in the exact same parking lot was a Hobby Lobby. And so we came out of the restaurant, and I said, Jerry, could I please go over to that Hobby Lobby? I promise I'll be really, 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 really fast. <laughs> so I went to the Hobby Lobby, and I came out with four or five pieces of green fabric. I'm sure I showed it to you. And then where else did I go? I went to Joann's where there was hardly any and I got a few pieces there. And I went to Oklahoma Quilt Works and I got a few pieces there. Now it's only in those places 10, 15 minutes, not very long at all. But there was this one other place. One day, I dropped Jerry up at our building in Oklahoma City and I said, can I have the Jeep for a while? Can I just go someplace all by myself in the Jeep and you stay here at the building? <laughs> he said, sure. So I got to go to another Hobby Lobby where I found a couple more greens. And on my way to that Hobby Lobby, I passed that one store. I don't know if any of you will remember this, but there's this store in Oklahoma City. It's only been there for a few years, maybe three or four at the most. And it's called Fabric Market. And it's on, if anybody lives in Oklahoma City, Hefner and May Avenue. And so I was going straight up May Avenue all the way to Memorial to go to the Hobby Lobby. And so, you know how your mind is when you're a seamstress. You can like smell a fabric store. And I got up there and I got up to Hefner. 
and there was a light there, and I stopped at the light, and I'm like, this looks familiar. Hmm, isn't there a fabric store in here somewhere? <laughs> and sure enough, my Jeep went right to it. Now, it's a really odd store. Very odd. I've talked about it before. In fact, I had been there one time, and it was over a year ago, because I still had my house in Edmond. And, you know, we sold our house in Edmond over a year ago. In fact, it was over a year ago in July. And so it was a year and a half, two years ago, I went to that store. And I walked in there, and a man waited on me. And while he was waiting on me, I was telling him, Oh, I have a YouTube channel, and I'll tell everybody about your store on my YouTube channel. And I bought several things that day and went home. Well, I never, ever, 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 ever went back. And I guess I did, just like I'm telling you now, you know, one of my videos, I said, oh, hey, I went to this store. So I'm in there, and another lady, who's probably his wife, she came up to me and said, can I help you? And I said, oh, yes, I'm looking for knits. And she said, well, come back here. Well, we were back there 30 seconds, and this man came back there, and he said, I know you. And I said, you do? How do you know me? He said, your Facebook page, you talked about us on Facebook. I said, I don't talk about anybody on Facebook. <laughs> I said, it's a YouTube channel. He said, I remembered you the minute I heard your voice. So I, I don't know if that's a good thing that people remember me by my voice or a bad thing. <laughs> he didn't remember me from what I look like. So anyway, this is a really strange store, in my opinion. There's no bolts. There's no bolts of fabric anywhere. It's all giant rolls, great big long 60 inch rolls. They don't have any cottons, only knits, maybe some laces. Maybe, I don't know what else they have because I just go straight to the knits. And the rolls are just like this thread. They're just stacked, only no spaces in between. They're stacked just on top, on top, on top, on top, on top, on top. Great big fat rolls and all different colors, all great big long rolls, and just stacked on top of each other. I'm not kidding you. Eight, ten high. So if you want a piece of fabric from this store, you have to somehow get the roll out. And the way they pulled those rolls out just scared me. I'm telling you, they would take a corner. They would take a corner. You know, they got this great big roll, and they would take a corner of the fabric, and they would pull it, and pull it, and pull it, and pull it, until the roll would, to, until the roll would start to come out. And I'm like, you're going to break it, you're going to break it, you're going to tear it. <laughs> and of course they didn't. It's knit, it stretches. So, I didn't find, I found one right away immediately. Walked right up to one and said, oh, I love this, it's my favorite color, it's turquoise, I want this. Hello, turquoise. So he pulled it down, or she pulled it down, off he was still back there. Pulled it down off the shelf, started to unroll it, and I said, oh, this has a whole bunch of flaws in it. He said, oh, yeah, that's why there's a mark over here, because it has a flaw in it. We'll cut that off. So we pulled some more out. More flaws, more mark. Pulled it out. The whole entire row had those little, it was like little pieces of brown tape stuck every so often on the roll, and it went the whole way through the roll. So he pulled it off the shelf to throw it away. And he said, I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe this is the first one you found. <laughs> so I looked some more and I managed to find three pieces. Now, another thing about that store, which is a little strange to me, is they don't know what the fabric is. Do you have any cotton knit? We might. Is your knit polyester? Probably. Is it just polyester, polyester mix? Oh, probably polyester and something else. They don't know what anything is. None of it's marked. So I don't know where it comes from and why it's not marked. So you kind of just take it out and play with it and see if you like it. And they said, we can do a burn test. I thought, I don't want to be burning fabric. So anyway, I'll show you what I bought. <laughs> Very pretty. And I think it's like $6 a yard, which is a great price. So this is the next closest thing I could find to a turquoise. And these haven't been washed. Oh, and there's a flaw in this one. There's a flaw going all the way across here. I don't know if you can see it. It's a dark mark. Oh, is that frustrating. 
Maybe it's just um, something that'll wash out, but it's just from here to here. But there's plenty left and I don't see any more marks. So, it's a knit. Let's see how it stretches. Stretchy, stretchy that way and great recovery. You don't want to buy something that doesn't bounce back. When you're looking at knits and you're in the store, always unroll some of it. Stretch it. Hold your hands apart like this. Stretch it. If it doesn't pop right back to where it was, put it back on the shelf. Don't buy it. That's called recovery. Now, does it stretch this way? A little bit. Just a little bit. So, of course, you would make this so the greatest stretch goes around your little body. <laughs> or a big body in my case. So, I got that color. I got this color. Bright purple. We don't know what these are, except that they're knit, and they're probably polyester. This one stretches. It looks like it's got a stripe right down the center, but I can cut around that. This one doesn't stretch as much as that one does. Made out of something different, evidently, plus there's a piece cut out of it. It bounces back good. Does it stretch the other way? A little bit the other way. So here's a dark purple, and it evidently has a uh, stripe right down the center. But you know, when you cut out a fabric, you fold it in the center. Oh, a lot of times you use the center, though, because it's center front or center back. Mm. Well, you can fold this to the center, you know what I mean? You can take it. Can you see this right here? If I put it on this green, can you see? So play like this is the fabric. Instead of folding it in half, you would fold it in half and in half to the center. Then the boo-boo part will be right here. And when you have 60 inches wide, you've got plenty to do that with. So I'm going to make myself three new tops. You know my tops. You know I have a whole bunch of tops. You've seen me make them over the years. Well, the more I wash them, the worse they look. The one you saw in my last video, it is just pilling all over the place. It has these little fuzzy things all over it. It looks terrible. This one, I don't think I've washed yet, and it still looks brand new. And I'm thinking, well, oh, there's a little bit right there. Thinking, maybe I should just never wash my clothes again. <laughs> so here's the third piece I got from that place. The prices are good, but you really have to check the fabric. Now, this has, is a rib knit. It's got a stripe going all the way through it. And this one stretches clear across the room. See that? So, it's obviously different than the other two. It has good recovery. Does it stretch the other way? No. Does it stretch hardly at all the other way? So, three colors that I think I look good in. So then, you know, I was headed to the Hobby Lobby, right? <laughs> when my Jeep just went, er, we're going to stop over here. So then I got back on the right road and went to the Hobby Lobby and I decided I needed some fabric to make a Christmas blouse with. I don't usually do birds, but what I do when I go in the store, a lot at Hobby Lobby because they have all those bolts on all the shelves, I'll take the bolt, play like this is a bolt, let's just play like this is a bolt, play like this is a bolt of fabric, and it's up on the shelf, and I want to know if I want to make a blouse out of it. I will take it out, I'll take the pin out of it and pin it in something else, so I'll get it back in a minute. I will unravel the fabric and I will hang it over a shelf. Then I will walk away. I'll go across to another place, you know, 10 feet away, and I'll look at it. And I'll think, oh yeah, I like that, or oh no, dear Lord, I hate it. So I got these birds out. <clears throat> I thought, oh, I like the colors in that. But I don't know if I want to wear those birds. And so I got this out, and I unrolled it, <laughs> and I folded it over, and I thought to myself, Viv makes birds. <laughs> and so I opened it up like that. Of course, it wasn't hanging down that long. And I thought, I love that. What do y'all think? I think that would be a really pretty Christmas blouse. I really like it. And even if you didn't make a Christmas blouse, it'd be really cute pajama pants, wouldn't it? So I love that. So I bought this 
to make myself a Christmas blouse. So that's going in the wash. Those four things are going in the wash. So this right here is going to be the border on my tree quilt. This is going to be the border on my tree quilt. Let's see how it's going to look. Let me get one of my trees. Let me get my tree that has the stem. Jerry said, you know, their stems aren't really brown. They're more like gray. I said, well, that's too bad. Let's put this up here. This is how I determine if I like something for a border. Same thing again. I usually hang it over my long arm. Or you can hang it over a table. Now, don't close the door with that on it. You'll mess up your fabric. But we can see if we like that for a border. And I love it for a border. And then I've got this for a flange. If I want to do flange duty, this is going to be a flange. And then it's going to be the binding. Maybe. I don't know. Because the binding and the flange touch each other. Um, I don't know. But anyway, I bought these two pieces to finish the quilt with. And you can see how I play with them. This is a real pretty... Um, and I got these in Branson. Remember, I got these in Branson? Let me see if you can see this, if I can focus it. It's really pretty. It's got a little gold dot. It's a tone-on-tone -tone black. And has a gold dot. I probably won't do a flange. I'll probably just do the binding, and it will be this black color. I think that's what we're going to do. See? Nice, nice, nice. Yay! So that's that project. And you realize that every project has the potential to constantly change. You know that, right? So when I came home, I just happened to have an order from Missouri Star Quilt Company. Just happened to have it. It just happens to be all these beautiful greens. Look. Which obviously I ordered before I left for my Christmas tree quilt. So those are awesome. Very awesome. So I'm ready to make more Christmas trees this afternoon. Tomorrow I have to spend a day in the office paying bills and going through um, mail and stuff like that. But um, today I'm going to make more Christmas trees and tomorrow uh, I may get back on the kitty cat quilt. And when I get on the kitty cat quilt, I will show you how I applique. Several people have said, show us how you applique. So I'm going to show you how I sew around the kitty cat. You don't have to watch me do it. So many people do it already on YouTube. Uh, Edit a sitar has videos showing you several different ways to um, sew down your appliques. But in this case, I'm going to do a real tight satin stitch because I'm like a five-year-old with a coloring book and I like to trace around <laughs> my whatever I'm coloring. I like to outline it. I like to color it in and then I like to outline it. So I want my uh, applique stitches to show. I hope Bib likes it that way because that's the way I'm going to do it. Okay? So that's all I really have to talk about today. I wanted to show you my new fabric. You've already seen my trees. And my new trees, I'm so excited. And I am going to try to do what one of you very nice ladies suggested and make just one piece of white and sew it on. Let's see what, let's, let's try that. Let's try it, Joy. So we're going to play like, we're going to sew white to this. And instead of a little two and a half inch square, we're going to sew this whole piece on. I don't know how this is going to work. You would need a ruler, and you'd have to draw the two and a half inch block right there. Draw it. Okay, so then you got to figure out which way this is supposed to fold. Let me see. I think it's supposed to fold like that. Yes. So then you would sew from here to here, here to here, this whole piece. Let's see if this will work. It makes a lot of sense to me. Any suggestions you have, I am very good at taking advice. 
I tell you, I just love it when somebody tells me a better way to do something. I love it. I tell you, I learned so many things from all my friends over the years. Okay, let me get close to the camera. Okay, so instead of cutting a two and a half inch piece all by itself, it would have been cut right there. I'm going to have the whole great big white piece and I'm going to sew this across there where those pins are. We're going to play like that stitching and we're going to open this up and see if it works. No, it doesn't. This does not work, my friends. It does not work. So the lady's suggestion does not work. This is why you have to do it the way I'm doing it. Because the rest of this great big piece of white it has to come out straight right here. It has to sew on this way. See? And you can't do that if it's attached up there. So, I would love to do it if somebody will tell me how it works because I'm coming out with a angle going the complete wrong way. Okay? Okay, folks. You can see I tried. It doesn't work. <laughs> and you're not going to know if somebody, something somebody tells you. Now, sometimes you can just know right off, oh, no way, I'm not going to do that. I tried that when I was five or something. But other times, if somebody gives you a new way, I noticed that people are suddenly using my way on the scan and cut of doing fabric. Somebody that told me, no, that's not how you do it. You're supposed to do it this way. That's not how you do it. I noticed that now they're doing it the way I showed to do it. So... People can change how they do things. <laughs> so, don't stop telling people, you know, at least me, because I love for people to tell me better ways to do things. Okay, my friends, I'm going to let you go. That's all I have to say to you today. But I will be back. It might even be Tuesday before I get to show you how to do the applique and everything. Because as you can see, my, um, my sewing machine isn't even up yet. <laughs> I sure do like that red border though. Tell me what you think about it. I just realized somehow I accidentally got five patterns in my cart when I was at that Hobby Lobby. That's a really nice Hobby Lobby. Um, I got five patterns in my cart. They're all new looks and they weren't on sale or anything. They're like $6.59 a piece. Five of them. And when I got home and went through my patterns, only two of them were duplicates. So how about that? At least I got three new patterns. You want to see them? Hold on. I'm coming over here just for you. Here we go. New look. Look at the, the legs. Love it. I love it. I love it. I think it's so stupid that you're not allowed to wear nylons anymore. I think it's the dumbest rule, especially when I have to wear support hose. And I had black support hose, so no problemo. And there's the drawings. That's the drawings on the back. Cool, huh? I love it, love it, love it. And easy! Here is 6683. Looks nice and warm. I like that collar right there. It's like the Dondi Top collar. I love it. That's the one I would make if I make this. I like it very much. I don't know about the pockets. Easy peasy. I wonder why there's two different ones that look exactly alike, don't they? Probably the v-neck. Nope, there's no v-neck. I guess it's just the two different collars. That collar and that collar. 6483. There's one two necklines. There's three necklines and there's four necklines. Notice the bust darts and the little splits on the side. That's what I like. How exciting! I really love making clothes. I could make that dress in one day easily. I could make three of them in a week easily. I love to do that. But when I'm doing quilting, oh my gosh, everything just slows down. Because I'm not using just one fabric, I'm using a zillion fabrics. <laughs> and I have to stop and I have to think and I have to plan and you understand all of that. I'm going to let you go for today because I have so much to do. I washed two loads of clothes yesterday. I've got a load in right now. I've got to put in the dryer. And then I've got to put some mail away 
and then I've got to make sure Jerry had his lunch because I already ate mine. And so then I just have things to do. So I'll be back. <laughs>